Today we're going to talk about replacing the front brake pads, rotors, and brake wear sensor. My brake pads are the non-Brembo version. If you have Brembo brakes, you will have a slightly different procedure. Because the front brakes on the car generate about 75% of the stopping force, I will use stock or better components. For the pads, I will use Akebono ceramic pads. My previous pads generated a lot of dust on the wheels, and so I wanted to change the pads, this time to a higher quality but low dust pad. The rotors will be the genuine Land Rover rotors, which are actually manufactured by Brembo. If you will be utilizing a torque wrench during this job, the torques will range from 14 newton meters to 275 newton meters. The torque specs will be listed in the video as well as in the description. For the complete parts and tool list, please refer to the description of the video. Alright, let's get started. First find a nice hard surface to work on and place the car in park. Remember to crack the nuts loose while the tire is still planted. Next jack up the side you'll be working on. Make sure to use a jack stand as well. Once the tire is free you're ready to fully remove the wheel nuts. Once off remove the tire completely. I usually set the tire down near it so I can sit on it. Here's an overview of the five items that will need to be removed in order to complete the job. First there are two 13mm brake caliper bolts, followed by two 12.21mm anchor plate bolts, followed by the T50 Torx rotor screw. But first things first, the brake caliper bolts. If you try to remove them you'll notice the glide pin will spin as well. You'll need a really thin 17mm wrench to hold it still while you unfasten the 13mm bolt. I happen to have a thin adjustable wrench that fits. Once the bolts are loose, completely remove the bottom bolt, but make sure to leave the top bolt in place. Next you will need to remove the height sensor. This is only located on the driver's side, so if you're doing the passenger side you can ignore it. Unfasten it from the bleeder screw and then pull it off the pad. I broke mine in the process, but since I'm replacing it, it doesn't really matter. Next you can swing up the brake caliper. This is all you really need to remove if you're only replacing the brake pads, since you can access the pads easily at this point. Prop up the caliper so you can access the pads. Next, remove the pads, but if they're stuck you can use a screwdriver to help. Be careful if you're not removing the rotor, since the screwdriver might scratch. Looking at the pads, it's clear that they are very close to completely worn, so the brake sensor was doing a good job in indicating low pads. Once the pads are removed, you can completely remove the caliper from the anchor plate by fully removing the top 13mm bolt. Land Rover was kind enough to provide a nice little area to hang the caliper while you're working. Try to avoid having the caliper hang by the brake line. The next step is to remove the caliper anchor plate. You'll need to remove an upper and lower 21mm 12 point bolt. These bolts are actually at really high torque, so you may need a mallet to help loosen them. Before removing the bolts all the way, now is a good time to remove the T50 rotor screw. To prevent the wheel from turning, you can insert a screwdriver into the rotor fins. Once the screw is loose, then you can finally remove the anchor plate, followed by the screw, and then completely remove the rotor.
Next, you might want to do some maintenance on the anchor plate. First, you can remove the retainer clips. Then you can take a metal brush and clear the brake dust from the area. Next you'll want to remove the glide pins. They'll just pop out. I would recommend cleaning them a bit and then re-lubricating them. Ideally, you would use silicone paste for this. Once the glide pins are refurbished, you can then reinstall them. Next, turn your attention to the hub. Clean it off a little bit with a metal brush to ensure a flat mounting surface. Next, grab your new rotor, spray some brake clean on the back surface since you won't be able to reach it, and place it on the hub. Take your T50 screw and fasten it. Next, take your anchor plate and reattach it with the 21mm bolts. Again, insert the screwdriver into the rotor fins, so now you can fully tighten the rotor screw. Next, you can insert the retainer clips. Make sure they are centered so they don't rub on the rotor. Now is a good time to apply some brake grease where the pads will rub. And finally fully tighten the anchor plate 12 point bolt. Now you can insert your new pads. Once the pads are in place, it's time to reinsert the brake caliper. Grab it off of the little shelf and reattach the top bolt so that it's in the swinging position. Since the new pistons are in the position that fit the old worn pads, they will no longer fit the new pads. You'll need to depress them back into the caliper to make some space. Now there are a few ways to do this. You can use a specialized brake pad spreader, you can use some channel lock pliers, or you can use a C-clamp like me. Depress one side and move over to the other side. 
You may notice the opposite side comes out slightly, so it may take a few times to depress them both. Once there's enough room for the new pads, you're ready to reinstall it. First, I would put some brake grease on the back of the brake pads, and then you can slide the caliper over. Mine needed a little bit of motivation to get all the way back on. Once the caliper is in place, hand tighten the lower 13mm bolt. Then you can fully tighten both bolts. Now remember, you will need a thin 17mm wrench to hold the guide pin still. Once everything is back together, I would spray down the front surface of the rotor since you shouldn't really be touching it anymore. Next we will work on the sensor, so we know when it's time to change our brakes again. It has many attachment points to so just unclip all of those. Snake it through the upper control arm like this. You'll notice that at the top, it appears to disappear behind some plastic. To peel this back, you'll need to remove a adjacent plastic clip. Once the clip is out, you can pry the plastic back and see where the sensor attaches. It is held in place by a plastic Christmas tree fastener. You can then pull that out and you'll have a little bit more working space. Once you actually remove the sensor, it'll look like this. Grab your new sensor and reverse the process. The new sensor should have its own new Christmas tree fastener, so don't worry if you mess it up. Once the sensor is in place, return it to all of the attachment points. Place the rubber anchor over the bleed screw and replace the cap. Next, we will reinsert the actual sensor into the pad. This is how it should look when it's totally seated. When the pads get worn again, the rotor will scrape off this connection point breaking the connection, and triggering the brake pad warning. If the brake pad light is annoying you while you wait for your parts to arrive in the mail, you can cut the old sensor and wire the two wires together, bypassing the sensor and turning the brake light off. Finally, return the tire and fasten the bolts. Remember to fully tighten the bolts once the car is actually on the ground. Additionally, remember to pump the brake pedal a few times after the job until you feel normal resistance in the pedal again. Pumping the pedal takes the slack out of the pistons as they engage the new pads. And that's it! Once you understand how to fix your own brakes, you can carry that skill over to many vehicles since the basic procedure will be similar. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I make Range Rover Sport and LR3 repair videos as issues pop up. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any simple fixes that could end up saving you thousands over taking it to the dealer. Have a good one.